Hello and welcome back to Dukas Copy TV. I'm Thomas Taplin. The Reserve Bank of Australia is keeping its interest rate on hold at 2.5%. It comes after RBA Governor Glenn Stevens said the economy hadn't grown as much as he'd liked over the last 12 months and wants the effects previous rate cuts are having on the economy to be allowed to settle. Well, joining me on the line now is market strategist Gavin Friend of the National Australia Bank. Gavin, thanks for joining us. Um, first off, we know the property market is really heating up in Australia at the moment, with some analysts saying they haven't seen the market this strong since 2009. This is the second month the rate has been at the record low figure of 2.5%. Just how long can it be sustained before the property market starts to overheat? I think you're right to point out the housing market is improving. It's, it's the best we've seen for a while. Um, some areas, such as Sydney, as you seem to be suggesting there, are being seen as hot, and we haven't had a description you know, like that since before the GFC. And there is some evidence of foreign purchases coming in around the margins. Um, but national house prices are rising by about 5%. That's not what you would consider as bubble territory. I think the RBA will clearly be keeping a, a, a watchful eye on the property market, but uh, don't forget this is in an economy that continues to grow below trend, subdued inflation, household spending levels are below average levels, mining investment is slowing, non-mining investment is restrained. And, you know, our view and the RBA's view is that the jobless rate is going to rise from the current 5.8% to about 6.8% over the next few months uh, into sort of mid, uh, late next year. So, you know, for many households, they need two salaries to pay a mortgage in some of these, uh, you know, uh, more, more buoyant property markets like Sydney and Melbourne. And if you think you're a householder with two, and you need two salaries to pay that mortgage and you're looking at a jobless rate that's going to go from where it is now up to 6.8%, uh, for most people that will tend to focus minds and that will help keep a lid on things such as the property market. Now one thing to notice with the RBA is the slight lack of concrete information and direction going forward. How are the markets reacting to this? Well, as always, these kind of statements from central banks are used as guideposts for markets to assess how policymakers are seeing things. And I think today's statement is clearly less dovish. It highlights an improvement in indicators of household and business sentiment. That is a new development. But it also noted it's too soon to judge whether uh, how persistent this change will be. So then, you know, you've got something for those that think now the market is stabilizing the past effects of cuts are going to come through and you know confidence is going to pick up and that will mean that the RBA doesn't have, need to move again for us as a house which sees this underlying weakness the rebalancing that needs to take place from the resources sector to the non-resources sector which is still isn't taking place uh, for us it means that we have to mind the gap if you like there will be this little period of, of uh, a resurgence of activity and confidence post the election but the underlying still remains weak and it means that the RBA may still have to cut again so you've got something in today's statement for both camps i think you know i think the interesting thing was on the uh in today's statement was the shift in the language on the currency where the rba does now seem to be a little bit more relaxed you know back in september it talked about a 15 percent fall in the currency which still left it high and it could fall further today uh, in spite of the fact that the currency has, has rebounded slightly and it's now, it's now talking about despite the rise in the currency it's still 10% below the peak as if that's a good thing but it's removed all references to it could fall further um, and, and remains high. It doesn't say that anymore. Well, it may well just be that the, the RBA is saying look, Aussie dollar has gone from 88 and change to 95, uh, 94 and change as we are now. We don't know whether it's going to fall any further, so we'll just remove any references to that. And if it does, clearly that will be a good thing in terms of rebalancing. The problem is, is as I said at the start of this piece, markets look to these statements for guidance. And if the RBA is saying or is, is, is removed from its statement a reference to the currency being high and could fall further, markets may well take that that the RBA is not unhappy with the level of the currency, and that's one of the reasons why the, you know, the currency is starting to move up on the day. Of course, another reason to that is because we've had uh, a number of reasonably positive economic releases today. The PMI Manufacturing Index rose above 50 for the first time in a number of years. 
uh, and there was some good news on retail sales and on uh, house prices today. It's all tentative, but all those things, along with the statement today, give you that kind of upward reaction in the Aussie dollar. The other last thing to play into this, of course, is what's going on in, in the U.S. Congress at the moment. Uh, and we can see today that, funny enough, the, the dollar is off pretty much get across the board. You'd expect when the U.S. government is shutting down and there are fears of, a, of, a, of, a, of, a, of a perhaps another downgrade from the ratings agencies, that the dollar might suffer against the yen and the Swiss, the traditional safe havens, even sterling and the euro. But against EM and commodity currencies, of course, which the, the commodity currency of which the Aussie dollar is, you'd expect the dollar to do quite well. So I think this is telling us that there's a little bit of concern as we head towards the debt ceiling talks in the middle of this month that the U.S. might get downgraded again and markets are a little bit wary of buying a currency which may well get downgraded. So we're going to have to watch this one and see how it plays out. For us, it, we think that the Aussie is you know, in a sort of a, a pause in, in sort of a sideways period at the moment, 93 to 95 and change. Not really looking for any big change in that over the next couple of months. But then as we get through this debt setting issue, as we invariably will, and we get into 2014, we'd be looking for the US economy to get into its kind of growth stride a bit more. And the stark difference is between that and other economies around the world, I mean, the dollar should do quite well. And that's why we've got a, a profile of the Aussie declining over the coming months uh, into the back end of next year. The RBA is in a bit of a tricky situation, though. I mean, on the one hand, it would like its currency, the Australian dollar, to continue falling. Yet we've seen gains since the rate announcement and since the US Federal Reserve decided to extend its bond buying program. But at the same time, employment and house prices are both rising. Is it possible we could see an even lower rate cut in the coming months as a result? Yeah, I mean, our house view is exactly that. You know, I think the market is quite polarised at the moment. There's been a, a little bit of a, uh, a spike in confidence that's come uh, not unexpectedly after the election. These, t these things, elections, tend to give a little bit of a boost in confidence. If you saw the latest NAB business confidence indicator um, a couple of weeks ago, that showed a nice spike in, in confidence, but notice that conditions, as the underlying, remain very subdued. Also note that that rising confidence came primarily from the mining sector. Well, that's not a surprise. The new government ushered in, the uh, Abbott government, has, has, has pledged to repeal the mining, um, uh, the, the, the mining taxes. And you know, under that environment, of course, the mining sector is going to be more, 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 more buoyant. We think that this uh, pickup in confidence. We're also seeing some of it, of course, in uh, the consumer sector as a result of uh, the lower mortgage rates, which is starting to feed in through, and some activity, as you mentioned, in the housing market. But we think this will probably fizzle against the backdrop of an economy that's still operating below trend. Um, and then uh, we'll move, uh, you know, we'll, we'll move down to uh, a further rate cut uh, later in the coming months. Now, the timing of that is, is difficult. Our house view is we can't rule out November, but that looks unlikely on the back of what the RBA has said today. Uh, there is a meeting in December, nothing in January. I think February is looking a little bit more uh, possible. Uh, and we'll be looking at our official rate forecast in, in the coming days on the back of this. But certainly, you know, we're looking for further rate cuts because of, you know, the, as I say, the underlying weakness that's in the economy and with the, with the unemployment rate that is expected to push up over the coming months. OK, Mr. Friend, thank you for joining me today and thank you for watching. Uh, if you're into sparkly stuff, my colleague Elaine Stenson is covering diamonds on today's Commodities Corner. Just click back and head to our forecasts and analysis section. But for now, goodbye.